Hi, welcome to the demonstration video of Quest. Quest is our new system for Sparkle query answering over relational databases and is part of the ONTOP framework for ontology based data access. You can download it for free at ONTOP's website. So, uh, what is uh, Quest about? Quest is all about querying uh, data through ontologies, in particular, very large volumes of data. Now, uh, today, in order to do this, we have to go normally if we want good performance we have to go through an ETL kind of approach. We have to take the data from the source, we have to extract it and transform it into triples, and then we have to start our query engine using the ontology and the triples, right? Then our applications are built, built uh, on top of this query answering engine. The Sparkle queries are sent to this query engine, let it be a, a Sparkle endpoint or an reasoner or a triple store. Uh, what is the problem with this architecture? There is a couple of issues that when you are dealing with very large volumes of data, gigabytes, terabytes, uh, become quite relevant. First, duplication. You have that uh, these, these new triples that are living now in our query answering engine are a copy of the original uh, data that is spending extra space and that costs extra time to, to generate, right? Now with duplication comes another problem synchronization. The fact that the query answering engine is not connected to the source forces us to implement synchronization mechanisms that propagate changes in the source. Otherwise, we are al always going to be out of sync. And third, and more importantly, metadata loss. The fact that the query engine never contacted the source, that it was never aware of the structure of the original data, nor of the way in which the triples were constructed represents metadata loss. Now, in the context of optimization of query answering, this is a huge, huge, huge problem. All this data could have been used in order to optimize uh, the query answering process. And now, because of the architecture itself, it's not possible. Now, in Quest, we address this problem by changing the architecture. Apart from ontology and source, now we have a new component. Mappings. Mappings tell the systems how you can bring the data from the source to, into the ontology to create uh, an able to create uh, triples. They have a, a formal meaning, they are axioms by themselves, and they become a component in the architecture. Using ontology, mappings, and source, now we initialize a system, in this case, Quest. And we let it connect and interact directly with the source. Our applications are still built on top of the query answering engine, but now the system, the query answering system, is in a much better position to optimize query answering. In particular, this kind of architecture allows the possibility of a very efficient way of doing query answering, and that is query answering by query rewrite. And it's what we have in Quest, what is special about Quest. When a Quest receives a Sparkle query from an application, it will use the ontology and the mappings to translate the Sparkle query into one single SQL query that gets sent to the source and executed right there. The answers are, are then uh, obtained by Quest and sent to the applications. Now, there are a couple of other systems like D2RQ and Virtuoso that allow you to do similar things, like querying virtual RDF graphs. However, we have a couple of features that uh, allow you to do sometimes more than what they can do or uh, obtain better performance. So these features are three. First, semantics. Quest is the only system that allows you to exploit RDFS and R2QL ontologies while answering Sparkle queries over virtual RDF graphs. Second, efficient access. When Quest queries the database, it does, this, it does it only once, by means of one single SQL query that gets executed over the source. There is no data coming back and forth from the database. And last, efficient queries. This SQL query that we generate is highly optimized. When Quest initializes, it extracts a lot of metadata from the database, primary keys, foreign keys, it analyzes the mappings, and it uses this information to generate an SQL query that is simple, that has no redundancy, that can be optimized 
by the relational engine and it can be executed appropriately. Let it be a commercial database or an open source database, the SQL is going to be efficient anyway. Now, uh, enough with introductions, it's time to, to see the systems in action. So what we're going to try to do here is present to you an OBDA scenario in which we're going to link the data from INDB that it's stored in an SQL database with the movie ontology. First, uh, let's talk a, li uh, a little bit about the data set. Uh, we're going to be using the database from IMDB. So this is the website that stores information about movies, directors, actors, uh, everything related to cinema, television, etc., etc. What we're going to be using from IMDB is the, the data only, not the website. This can be downloaded from uh, www.imdb.com slash interfaces. You can download it and uh, you're going to get a bunch of plain text data files that uh, later you can use IMDb PY. This is a source, source forge project that allows you to transform this into an SQL database. You can store it in uh, Postgre, MySQL, DB2, Oracle. Uh, in this demo, we're going to be storing it in an open source database so that you can see how, how fast things can go even in an open source database. In this case, it's going to be Postgre. So we, we are going to uh, dump all this data into the schema generated by IMDB PY. This schema has 21 tables that have information about all the titles, where the movies, TV series are, information about the cast of these uh, titles, about people in the, in the cinema domain, etc., etc., etc. It's uh, 21 tables with approximately uh, 50 million rows in, in total, and it's uh, about 1.5 gigabytes uh, of data. The, this is a, uh, this copy that we have right here, it's a little bit old. It's about uh, two years old, but uh, it gives you an idea of how things go. So this is uh, the database. Now the ontology is going to be the movie ontology. The Movie Ontology is a small project developed at the University of Zurich. Uh, basically, what uh, it aims at is providing some standard vocabulary for talking about movies. It, uh, it, it defines some specialized vocabulary, and it also tries to reuse some uh, of the vocabulary provided by other ontologies, like uh, DBpedia, etc., etc. It's available for download at movieontology.org. It also has a little bit of documentation. As and as we can see, uh, it contains several hierarchies uh, related to some of the, co the classes associated to movies. For example, there is a class of territories. There is a, a hierarchy there that involves Oceania, America, Europe, and uh, the regions of each of these continents. There is also a hierarchy on types of movies, the genres of movies. So we have entertainment, we have uh, information, in entertainment, we have action, we have uh, different kinds of, of genres. So hierarchies are represented here with the dotted uh, arrows. And the straight arrows, the, uh, the bold arrows, are relations. So movies have certifications, for example. Movies uh, have editors. They have people associated to them. And the, and the ontology contains properties for these arrows. So it's, we're, we're going to see them more in detail when we make the mapping. Now, to create the mappings, uh, we're going to be using a plugin for Protege uh, called ONTOP. This is our plugin. It's part of the ONTOP framework for ontology-based data access. It's already installed in this copy of Protege, and it includes a mapping editor and a copy of Quest. So most of the demo we're going to be doing, in fact, using this plugin. So here we are now in Protege 4.2. We're going to open the movie ontology. We're going to browse it just a little bit so that you can see it. We have the classes that I mentioned before in the in the in this picture that we had from the website, genres, movies, persons. We also have uh, the properties that can be used together with these classes, and a couple of data properties also. The budget, uh, the IMDb rating. Some of these properties are from the movie ontology, and some of them are in fact from DBpedia. For example, person is a concept, a class from DBpedia. 
Now we're going to be using the OBDA model tab, a new tab introduced by our plugin, in order to declare the data source, the database that, that we're going to be mapping right now. So we're going to create a new database, IMDB SQL. We have to put the JDBC connection parameters. This is just the location of the database in a way that Java can understand. The access information and the driver, the Java driver that we must specify to, to connect. So the connection information is, is okay. I'm gonna save it. Now I'm gonna create one simple map. What we want to do right now is just uh, show how we can populate a class. What we need to do is click on create new mapping. We have to name this mapping. This name doesn't really matter. Uh, mapping mapping uh, movie, it's just an ID. And then we need to choose which data to bring from the database. Uh, how to do it? By means of an SQL query. So we know that there is a table called title and that the columns ID and title are what we need right now. So we're going to do select ID and title from the table title. Let's check the content of this. This is the content that we wanted. And what we need to specify now is uh, what to do with this data. We call this a template of uh, triples. So what we're going to do with this data is first we're going to create a URI for our movies. We do it with a template URI that looks like this where I'm using the default prefix, the title namespace, and I refer to the ID column. So this is a template for the URIs that I'm going to use for movies. Now this URI is going to be declared to be a movie. That's my first, uh, the first part of my template. Second part of my template that I wanted to do in the same mapping, uh, I could separate it, but it's easier to do it in the same mapping, is to say that this same URI also has a title. Title. And that's it. As you can see, the, the plugin also has some, some uh, features to hint you whether you are writing correctly your templates or not. So now I finish. I provided the source of the mapping, the SQL query, and the target, which is the, the, triple, the triple templates that basically define my virtual graph. I will modify it a even a little bit more. I'm going to say that this title is an string. And that's it. That's my mapping. I'm going to accept it. I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it. And now I'm going to start the reasoner. Now the reasoner is running. It took my mapping, it connected to the database, and uh, it extracted some metadata, and now it's ready to be queried. Now to query, we're going to be using the OBD query tab. This tab is uh, part of the on top plugin for Protege. And by basically what it allows you to do is to send Sparkle queries to Quest and to see the results right there. We're going to be able, through the Sparkle queries, to see the uh, effect of our mappings. So the queries want to use two prefixes, the prefixes from the ontology. And what I want is basically just to query the content of the class uh, movie and the property uh, has title. So I'm going to ask for all x and t such that x is a uh, movie and uh, it has title t. And I don't want all movies, I just want uh, those that have title equal to finding If I execute the query, this is what I get. This is basically what our mappings are giving us. And what we can see is that uh, the result is not just the content of the SQL database. It is really the, the URIs that we described in our, in our template and the XML data values that we described in our, in our, in our templates, in our mappings. Uh, now, what is interesting here is uh, not the results, right? but the way in which Quest is giving you these results. 
in Quest, what is happening behind the scenes is that this Sparkle query is being translated into this SQL query. Basically, the system analyzed our mappings and it under understood that in order to answer that Sparkle query, it should uh, uh, execute this query over the database. And note that the database is queried only once to the correct table with the correct conditions on the title column that reflect the semantics of the filter. So that's, uh, that's a simple way of mapping. Basically, if we want to map the whole database, the only thing that we need to do is to continue creating mappings in this way. Now, uh, because the database is quite big and the ontology is quite big, I'm not going to do it live here, but I'm going to present to you a, a set of mappings that we have already prepared and we're going to see them together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this worked out example that is here in a new window. This is a worked out example. I'm just going to adjust. Okay, this is already done. So uh, what we have is the same ontology, of course, just that we have many, many more mappings. So we have uh, mappings that cover the person hierarchy. So we have mappings for actor, for actress, for producer, for writer. Uh, note, uh, this, this, is, this is a very representative kind of mapping. It's a mapping where uh, you have a, a join because uh, the information of a person is stored in some other table, not just in the name table. So it's in, in the cast info. So there is a join and uh, there is a condition on this join. In IMDB SQL, uh, the role of a, of a person is identified by an ID. If it's one, then it's an actor. If it's two, then it's an actress. If it's three, then it's a producer. Four, then it's a writer. And that's the way that we populate this hierarchy, the mappings for this hierarchy. We don't have a mapping for person. We can see that because it's not needed. So the mappings for uh, actor, for actress, for editor, etc., they cover already the content of person. The, the reasoner is going to be able to deduce the content of person, person from the hierarchy itself. We also have a mappings for the basic properties of people and of movies, uh, of movies for example, the birthday. Uh, birth date of a person is stored in the person uh, info table and again uh, we use an ID to identify uh, the rows that have content about birth date. That's something very characteristic of, of the IMDB database that uh, there is many tables that store uh, sometimes tens or hundreds of different properties that are only identified by some ID. So you have to put a condition to extract the information that you want. In this case, 21 identifies the rows that have birth date information about a person. That's what we get here. This one is for name. This is a direct scan on uh, the table name, uh, the, the name of, of people, IMDb rating. Also, you have these conditions. Always you have these conditions. An interesting hierarchy is that of uh, the genres of a movie. Uh, so we have that movies belong to a genre. This information we got it uh, from the uh, movie info table when the info uh, type is three. So only in those conditions, uh, the information is actually about the genre of a movie. This is the mapping that connects the movie and the genre with its genre. And then we catalog the genre of a movie by the content of the info column. If the info column says action, then the, this genre is an instance of root action. Uh, in action reach. If it's uh, adventure, then it's an instance of imagination entertainment and also it's an instance of action reach. Right? If uh, it's animation, it's a fun. And that's a way that we put genres of movies in this hierarchy. So these are the mappings. It's a total of, of 70 mappings. And uh, as I said, uh, we don't have mappings for all the all the classes and all the properties. Some of them are empty. Some of them are not necessary to be mapped because they are going to be uh, populated by means of deduction. So the system is going to use the axioms of the ontology to deduce the content of this this uh, these properties based on the content of others. And now what I want to show you is how these mappings are used in query answering in some more interesting queries. So we're going to start the reasoner. 
Visual is just connected to the database. It obtained the metadata. And now we can query. So this is a simple example where we ask, give me all those movies that were directed by Quentin Tarantino. We have 18 tuples there. How did it do it? How the system did it? Basically, it had to do the join of name, cast info, and title. And here we have the conditions of the query. Know that uh, in other systems, it's often the case that you have to, to have a, a table in the from clause for each of the elements in the work clause. We don't uh, do that. We only have whatever is necessary in this, in this query, in this particular query. Here we have a, a simple query that asks for all the titles that uh, belong to the gender action rich. If we query it, it's actually a big, uh, this query involves uh, a join of two very big tables of the title and movie info table. These are very big tables. And as you can see, the query returns quite fast. And the query itself, the SQL query that we get, takes into account the hierarchy below action reach. So there is a couple of, of uh, elements in this hierarchy, and the query uh, considers uh, all the possibilities that uh, a movie has to be in that category. So if the movie says adventure, if the movie says action, if the movie says war all, or western, all these are uh, all these belong to action race rich and this was deduced by means of the T box of the ontology. And when we generate the query, we the SQL query we take that into account and we try to do it in a way that it's efficient. Then this is another one, this is a simple one where we want all the actors that participate in uh, finding Nemo and their, their birth date also. This is the actors. Again, the performance is very fast, even though that we have joins on very big tables. So these are tables with millions of individual of, of rows. So uh, again, there is a, a bit of reasoning going on here. So here the query is, is uh, asking for uh, every actor that is actor in Y. Y is finding Nemo. But we don't have a mapping for actor in. We have a mapping for the inverse, which is has actor. Uh, actually, not even the inverse. So there is the inverse, which is has actor, and the inverse has two sub-properties, has actress and has male actor. And we have mappings for those. So the system uh, doesn't need mappings for is actor in. It can deduce the content of is actor in by means of that inverse and that little hierarchy. And uh, it's reflected in this part of the query. So this uh, reference to QView0, which is uh, cast info is the part that is getting the content for is actor in and it does it by uh, considering both possibilities that the, the actor is a male actor or an actress. These are relatively simple queries but you can already see the kind of SQL that we generate which is quite efficient. This is a more, more uh, elaborate query. This is a query that asks for all movies such that the director of the movie is also an actor in the movie. And we don't want all movies, we want those that have a rating more than seven and that were produced from 2000 to uh, 2001. So it's quite an elaborate query uh, that involves uh, uh, some deduction again because of the has actor, right? Uh, and uh, involves many properties. When we execute it, again, it's a, it's a very fast query. We're also ordering and sorting. It's a very fast query, even though that it's involving very big tables. In this case, this is a query that we generate. You can see it's much more complex. And it involves get this data from IMDb. We have no redundancy in this query, in this query being generated by Quest. This is a representative query of one of the big advantages of using Quest for ontology-based data access. Once you did the job of making the mappings, you don't need to burden the user uh, with formulating queries, formulating queries in SQL. So if a user would want to, to generate these SQL queries on top of the IMDB database, he would really have to spend 
quite a bunch of time trying to understand which are the tables that need to be joined, which are the conditions on each of the tables that need to be expressed. And this is quite a complex job because the database is very complex. However, if you look at the Sparkle version of the query, this is relatively simple and it's, it's very intuitive, it's very conceptual. So Quest is able to handle all this complexity to, to hide it uh, from the user. And not just hiding it, also implementing it, generating these SQL queries in very efficient ways that are able to give you answers uh, for very big uh, queries in very little time. And uh, that's it for, for the demo. I hope uh, it gave an idea of what is the, the special uh, aspect of Quest in ontology-based data access, why it's interesting. And uh, we hope that if you have some questions, uh, you contact us. We will be happy. And you are going to be able to download this scenario uh, together with the material that you need to reproduce it uh, from the same website uh, that has this link. Thank you very much and goodbye.